6.3 and 4 medians and altitudes of triangles mid segments. A median of a triangle is a segment from a vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side of a triangle. How many median segments could you create with the triangle to the right? Draw them and discuss with your neighbor if you had your neighbor. So it's from a vertex to a midpoint. So here's one midpoint to a vertex. Here's the other vertex, opposite side, midpoint. Another vertex, opposite side, midpoint. So we can draw three medians in each triangle. And when those um, meet at each other, that intersection has a name. It's called the centroid, C-E-N, centroid. That's an E. A centroid of a triangle is the center of gravity within the triangle. So imagine that this was cut out or was like a piece of cardboard. If you put that on your finger, it would balance right at that intersection. It is the balance point. It can be constructed by creating three me medians and finding their intersection. The centroid of the triangle is two-thirds of the distance from each vertex to the midpoint of the opposite side. So if you can imagine, you're going to take each of these segments and cut it into three equal pieces, starting with the shorter piece. So see, this is one-third, and then if I cut it again, two-thirds, three-thirds. And you can do that in each direction of each, mid um, of each median, and it will create the centroid at the two-thirds mark. See how it's two-thirds down? One, two, and then the centroid. So uh, let's try it one on. So example number one, RST and point Q is the centroid. And SQ is 8. So see how that's the longer bit of the median? Find QU and SW. So um, let's work on SW first because it's part of the it's part of the whole of QS or SQ, however you want to say it. So see how this is one third and now split it again, and now that's two thirds. So recall that that whole length is eight. So if we split this into two chunks of eight, we've got a little chunk here that's four, a second chunk here that's four, and a third chunk here that's four, because this top half is eight. So that means that the whole length of SW is 12. Four times three is 12. And then the other uh, length that they'd like us to find is QW, but we just found that. We wrote it on there. That's the smaller portion. That's the a one third is the length of four. Find the coordinates of the centroid of the triangle JKL with vertices J at 2, 1, S at 5, 8, 3, And T at eight three. Eight three. So you only need one median in order to get the centroid of your triangle. You don't need all three because once you have one median, you can use that median to help you get the um, two thirds length. So when you look at each side, what you're trying to figure out is which side length has the easiest midpoint to see. So on this side, oh man, that one's kind of tough, cuts through a lot of boxes. This one also uh, cuts through a lot of boxes. But if you look at the side JT, <clears throat> you can see that JT runs right through a midpoint right there, up one over three, up one over three, and it's got a really nice midpoint on that side. So if that's the case, then the median that you would draw in is from S to that midpoint straight down. Now that you've drawn in that midpoint, all you need to do is cut that length into thirds. So one, two, one, two, 
one, two, so two, two, and two. So our median is <clears throat> two, four, six units long, and we want two thirds of that. So we come down two thirds, and our centroid lands right there at two thirds the length. So all we need to do is figure out where is that located. So that's located at five, one, two, three, four. So the centroid is at five, four. Okay, now we're gonna talk about an altitude of a triangle is the perpendicular segment from a vertex to the opposite side of the of the line that contains the opposite side. It may live outside of the triangle and the only, the time that it lives outside of the triangle is when it's an obtuse triangle. So see this acute triangle and you draw the altitude in straight down, it lands on the opposite side. But if you have an obtuse triangle, see QPR is an obtuse angle, if you draw a line straight down from Q, the altitude actually lies outside of that triangle. If you turned this triangle and did it from P, you would be able to get the height without being outside of the triangle. So what really matters is the orientation of the triangle being an obtuse angle. Another word for altitude, another synonym for altitude is height. So anytime a problem asks you to find the height of a triangle, they are also asking you to find the altitude of a triangle. So those two words need to be synonymous in your mind for triangles. Altitude and height are the same thing. Now, if you draw three altitudes, take a look at this picture here. If you draw three altitudes in a triangle, the intersection that it creates is not the center of gravity, but it does have a name. It's called an orthocenter. It's the intersection of three altitudes. Honestly, it doesn't really give you um, anything important, not like gravity or anything, but it does create an intersection in the middle of the triangle. So example three, find the area of each triangle. Recall that finding the area of triangles is one half the base times height. Or you could say base times height divided by 2 is another way to say that. So in this case, we've got 12 is the base and height or the altitude is 6. So area is 1 half 12 times 6. And you can punch that into a calculator all at once if you would like to. You can divide. You could do 12 times 6 and then divide by 2, whatever you would like to do. But you'll get 36 and this is millimeters and its area, so it's squared. Now compare these two triangles. Take a look at the next one. This one's got a base of six and a height of 12. So what do you think is gonna be true about the areas of those two triangles? Well, let's find out. Area is 1 half six times 12. Well, look at that. They have the same area. So don't be fooled sometimes by area that um, the shapes look different, but they're actually the same the same area. So that's the main reason that you need altitude is for finding areas of triangles. You need the height in order to find the area of triangle. That's the important use for that guy. Okay, moving on to 3.4. 3.4 is all about what's called a mid-segment of a triangle. So here's our definition. A mid-segment of a triangle is a segment that connects the midpoints of two sides of the triangle. Every triangle has three mid-segments, which form the mid-segment triangle. So if you take a look, there's a middle, there's a middle, there's a middle. Connect those middles, and this inside triangle is called the mid-segment triangle. The mid-segments of ABC at the right are MP, MN, and NP, and the mid-segment triangle is MNP. So um, example number four, something that you need to note is that mid-segments create parallel lines. So here is our diagram. M is the midpoint of this side length. N is the midpoint of this side length. And they want us to prove that MN is parallel to JK. Oh, I'm sorry, JL. JL, this bottom one. Um, so because we're given a grid on, on this example, you can just use the grid to find the slope if you want to, or you can calculate it by hand using the slope formula. 
I prefer to just use the grid, so let's check it. So I go up one over four, up one over four, up one over four. So they have the same slope, so they're parallel. Remember that double slash means parallel. They have the same slope of negative one-fourth. Another theorem for mid-segments, the segment that contains the midpoints is of the two sides is parallel. We just proved that to the third side and half as long as the opposite side. So that means that DE is half the size of AC. So if we put numbers on this, if this was four, then that length would be eight. So here's an example, find KM. We'd like to know how long KM is. All I know is that KM is double the size of XY. So think about it. Do you want to go the direction of halving something? Do you want to cut 3x plus 6 in half? No, let's think about going the other direction. How can I go the other way from 4 and create 8? So instead of halving, we can double. 4 times 2 is 8. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 2x times 2 and make it 3x plus 6. So we can do, um, so again, you could go two different ways. You could do one half, 3x plus 6 equals 2x, but I think doubling is nicer. So 2 times 2x equals 3x plus 6, because that's the one we want to make larger. So that's 4x equals 3x plus 6 minus 3x. So then that's x equals 6. But it wants us to find km, so 3 times 6 plus 6, 18 plus 6, which is 24. So let's check and make sure that the links make sense. So if this is 24 and I plug it into the shorter one, 2 times x is 12. So that matches 24 to 12. All right, last one, example 6. Triangles are used for strengthening roof trusses. In the diagram, UV and VW are mid-segments of RST. Find UV and RS. So yes, go with your gut on these ones. If you feel like it's um, the smaller length, then double to get to the larger one. Or if it's the larger one, half to get to the smaller one. So let's do uh, UV first. So see how this far side down here is 90 inches. UV is its mid-segment. So when we go from 90 to UV, we cut 90 in half, which is 45. All right, so now we're going the other direction. It wants us to find VW. So, um, oh, it's saying that VW is the mid-segment. We're supposed to find um, RS. So if this is 57, then we're going this direction, which means this is the smaller one, and we want to get to the longer one that's opposite, so we need to double. So 57 times 2, and RS is 114. Thank you.